Hello, everyone. I'm Sam Ekman of Gold Derby. I'm here with Marcus Rowland, production designer of Last Night in Soho. And this film, the whole look to the film is really unique uh, and, and amazing. And it's steeped in the 60s. And I know you've done a lot of work with, with Edgar Wright, uh, but I don't think I've seen you tackle this era together, uh, certainly not in this way. What is it like sort of having a, you know, a collaborator and many collaborators you've worked with in the past, but diving into something new with them? Well, the, you know, I mean, obviously I've worked with Edgar quite a lot and yes, it's a different departure. Uh, and, and, you know, I mean, that's the exciting thing about Edgar as a director, he doesn't really want to repeat what he's done before. So it was obviously a good opportunity to, you know, I mean, tackle a different period, go into some more period dressed, albeit very stylized versions of, uh, of, uh, of, of the period. So, but, you know, you know, I mean, it, yes, it's a different period. Yes, it's a different approach. And, uh, but, you know, I mean, the, the working methodology behind it is the same, whatever film we do. That, uh, you know, I mean, it's a very collaborative one. Edgar sort of, you know, I mean, not just me, but gets everybody involved quite early on in discussions of how we're going. You know, he, I, he's he's incredibly thorough, and uh, and so am I. You know, I mean, we enjoy the process of actually beginning to understand the film, and it's not it's not something that we arrive at very quickly. So we, you know, I mean, the whole process of uh, you know, I mean, we you obviously start with locations and research and and sort of be, begin to build a sort of collage of the way we want the film to look, and that process, you know, I mean, can take. You know, I mean, a reasonable period of time. Certainly in Soho, you know, there are some wonderful references around from that period anyway, but we also spent quite a lot of time, even though we're very familiar with the centre of Soho, uh, going out, wandering around the streets, sort of early morning, really, before well, it was fairly quiet. So we had a sense of, of a, a slightly emptier Soho than the sort of bustling one that seems to run most of the time. So we'd go out at six in the morning, be out, grab a coffee and, and have a wander around. It's a, it's a good time to see things yeah. and, re, and, and revisit things and explore again. And that sort of triggers, triggers conversations, which leads on to the way we approach the, the particular scenes and how, and, and it, you know, I mean, and in that journey, I get a sense of the way Edgar wants to treat those particular, you know, I mean, particular builds as well. Yeah. Uh, so it's the same. It's it's different, but it's the same approach that we've uh, we've uh, sort of fine tuned over the years. Let's say. Do you have like a? Do you prefer going and diving into a period because it's so removed, or do you like working on the contemporary settings? You know, I mean, I I, I think I like working on anything. <laughs> <laughs> it's really, it really, the design process is is the challenge, really, and it it, it you can. And, and certainly some more contemporary looking films involve as many design choices as you have to make in a period one. It's just, I think sometimes it's a bit more of an obvious read when they know you've had to replace all this. But, you know, I mean, and often on, on various films, you know, I mean, including Baby Driver, we, you know, there's a lot goes on to change the setting. It's just probably not as, uh, as clear. I, you know, I enjoy, and you know, I mean, obviously it's a nice, you know, the sixties is a great period to 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 work with, uh, and and we've had some fun building the particular clubs in the scenes. I want to ask about because so much of the there's a big set piece with the Cafe de Paris, obviously, and uh, I think that was a recreation. Yeah, I assume. well, it's not. I mean, I I I don't know what's the right word because <laughs> it's not really a recreation. It it's a sort of we do. And I, I've done this before, where you sort of go and visit the place. The place nowadays is, you know, I mean, is it's a lot smaller than the one we built, to be honest, and it, and it's a very sad and I don't know, to say this very sort of fairly down at heel club nowadays. So originally in the in its heyday, and just after the war, and probably just before, it was a lot more glamorous. It was the glamorous place to go out, and, and extending into the sixties. So we took some of the key elements from that place and changed it. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, the staircase, actually the idea of the staircase coming down and then looping around the sort of band area, the singing area, performing area actually does exist like that. But it's a different scale 
there's no second level in the original place. The finishes are completely, you know, you take the, the vibe of the particular existing place and twist it to the, to the, to the, to how you want to take it really. I, I think that that's the fun bit really. It would be a, it wouldn't really be a fun job if it was just re reproducing something that already exists in a way. Sure. And, the, and it, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> you know, what I was going to say is, and it's always quite interesting, and I've done this on a few things where I've done adaptations of group. The most sort of the weirdest but most rewarding thing is when people come in and say it's exactly like, the, they remember it, it's exactly like the club. But we ha I had the same on... Uh, you know, on Rocket Man, and in in the states, we built some of the interiors, and everybody said you know, it's it's a compliment in a sort of strange way that they've they they see the main references, but they they don't notice the the, the things you've tinkered with. One thing that struck me about a, a lot of the sets uh, and thinking about it from a production design perspective is that there seems to me to be such specific requirements for your uh, set based on what, you know, Edgar and Chung want to capture, like thinking of all those mirror moments where Ellie, you know, descends those stairs with Anya uh, and they're sort of sucked into the same world in that way. Is it challenging to sort of, you know, have to create something, but there's a list of, of things that need to go into it? Yeah, I mean, that's part of the design process and we never, you know, I mean, and, and, and with the decisions that we made with Edgar Chung and, and Tom VFX, that when we were constructing those particular shots, which involved mirrors, I think the, the most, we always knew that it would be a sliding mirror when, when the, Sandy's handing over a coat and that sequence at the bottom of the, the sort of hat check area. Uh, but part of it is driven by experimentation we set it up we build part of it see how that's working and and then adjust the set accordingly this the, the actual one that's most striking really is the I, you know and I, I really like is the one coming down the stairs with the mirrors reflected and and initially we didn't really you know initially there was thoughts that we would double a staircase the other side of it as if it was a reflection and then put glass in but really that doesn't quite work because the perspective shift the set the staircase is further away but we didn't we still played around with that idea for a while and then you suddenly get to a point you think now this is the better way of doing it and it was about ang I mean selecting the angle of the mirror and having you know I mean, we built some models and and had a sense and I really like that duplication so it's it wasn't a clear decision, but it's a decision process that we go through. We're trying to find the most interesting technique at that particular point in time. And it's the same with the other mirror things. Some are, some are practical, some are part practical. There's digital elements to help. So it, it, it's that amalgamation of all areas into the design, which is the, it is the seamless bit of it. And I think the most effective. Yeah. How long, there's so many of those club uh, sequences, how long does it take to build, uh, you know, a set that massive? Well, weirdly, we, you know, I mean, in the UK, it's absolutely crazy busy. So, and it has been for a while. So actually stage space is, is very difficult. So, but we, we sort of managed to get at that particular one for all those, all the three clubs are all in one stage and it's a very long, thin stage. So we had to build them all in, in time to rehearse. And it was tight, I, you know, I mean, we built all of them in six weeks, wow. which, which is tight construction wise. I mean, I, we were still tinkering them, you know, I mean, in terms of we were doing, I think after six weeks, we were doing some rehearsals and we were still tinkering. We were running in and tidying things up and polishing things and, you know, until the moment you start shooting. But the actual construction was six weeks would, would have been extremely ambitious, but, you know, I mean, it was much less than we wanted. Yeah. And the flip side of the clubs, um, the Eloise's room, Thomas and Mackenzie's character, you know, it's 
funny how on the one hand it has to be sort of spooky and uh, yeah. decrepit a little bit yeah. and yet she must fall in love with this place the moment she steps into it so how do you approach creating a space like that well, actually weirdly that probably is one of the hard you know I mean the hardest decisions that you can you make I mean I know it's you know I mean it's prescriptively a loft apartment but yeah get, trying to give it a texture without you know, I mean, obviously it's the same room as Sandy's to try and make them stand apart. You're so still aware. It's not supposed to be something that is overly pleasant, you know, I mean, or, or it's still something that's a sort of a bedsit, really, I suppose we call them over here. So it was trying to come up with, trying to keep it fairly neutral and in terms of when you go in, it still feels very sparse. And, and you know, I mean, it's that balance between sparse and uh, and and still, you know, an appealing. I think that she brings the appealing to it, the, just the freedom of having her own space and, and dance around. But in terms of, you know, I mean, it, it, in many ways, that is a hard, that was a hard set because there's a lot of things happen in that set. So you, you're sort of, A, trying to manage, you produce something that's, you can shoot in very comfortably without over-exaggerating the size. But also, I didn't want it busy at that point in time, as opposed to Sandy. So the choice of texture of wallpaper and things like that, we, you know, and spend quite a bit of time trying to find the right material to, to, to put to the wall. And I, you know, and, and it, it means that when, you know, I mean, it will be at the frame can be quite empty. You've still got detail in there yeah. and relief. Do you find that you look at things, um, you know, because that's a space that is so tied to a character. Do you yeah. look at your spaces as their own separate, characters or do you look at them through the lens of how the characters in the show or in the movie will I, I suppose you know it, I, you know I mean obviously the character has a formative part in how you the you know I mean how you approach the the, the set it's a sort of combination of trying to get your head around that particular character or you know I mean in terms of that room really it's more about Mrs Collins than it is about Ellie she's you know, it's it, it needs to be sort of timeless. So it's trying to, it, and it sort of is timeless, even we've kept a few of the, the older bits. So it, it's more about the particular house and Mrs. Collins' house, which which is the exterior is a real location on the street in Soho. So they're all sort of, all these decisions and design decisions are driven by, you know, constant changing elements, finding the right location, how that fits the casting how we want to structure it, tie in the, you know, I mean, the colors and, and textures with the costume. So I never feel that, I feel you, you know, I mean, I never feel the design's done until you've sort of shot it really. I'm quite happy to change things at the last minute or, you know, it, it, it's part of, and you know, and I know as much as possible, you have a sort of clear indication of the way you're going with the design, but it, I like the journey and I don't particularly like to, you know, I mean, not be able to, to feel your way through it really once you see the props in some things don't work some things do it's too busy it's too it's, you know it, it it's it's the process which is the fun bit it's the designing and the, the craft in combining all those various elements together yeah how um you know the the way that it's shot and lit uh, your sets provides so much um, of the surrealism of this movie um, and the sort of oddity, you know, yeah. horror tinged elements. Um, how much of that has to be planned out so far in advance, like at the start of the process, or is it not done until, as you say, you're, you're still getting props? No, no, I mean, it, you know, I mean, certainly, that, that it's certainly in terms of, uh, well, certainly Ellie's room and Sandy's room, particularly, you know, I mean, in, in those instances, obviously there's this the neon sign outside, so that has a big bearing on on how the lighting appears and 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 how that works with that environment. So, and that was always in the script, so that that's part that comes part of the the original brief in a way, uh, and uh, you know, and those sets because of the scale of I didn't really do any visuals on the bigger sets. We did visuals and. And I had a fairly clear indication of where and how I wanted the colors to go, to be honest. And, and it's, 
and and doing visuals where you can adjust the tone and and sense is very constructive in and obviously the like the dp brings another dimension to that but i generally generally on all those three clubs i had a clear color combination really in terms of of how it played out in certainly obviously in the Café de Paris it's very clear in the Rialto I, I really like the tones it's still very green and gold the background and then you've got two the, the costumes juxtapose it create um sort of uh you've got sort of pinky colored curtains and then she's wearing a very you know I mean nice yellow yellow costume and then Chung has lit it with a sort of warmth of a and it sort of all meshes together and I, I, and it and it's playing with those tones and colors which is uh, you know i mean which is you know I mean, we we ex i experiment firstly with visuals and then obviously there's the next dimension when it becomes a tangible set and we have the costumes and and obviously the lighting plays a big part in in sort of you know I mean, selling the set without without good lighting you're completely lost well uh i said at the start you know this is the the you know something new it's the first time we've really seen this type of uh attitude and um tone is there you know pretending that edgar doesn't have any uh ideas for his next project yet what would you what's kind of your dream uh aspect to design is there a period or a style that you haven't tackled yet that you're dying to and that's a tricky question <laughs> I, you know, I, I don't really have one. I, I, I think it, it's more, you know, I mean, each, it's, you know, I mean, I, I honestly don't have one particularly. It's not, it's more about if I feel it's a challenge and it's an interesting avenue to explore and it really could be absolutely anything. I don't have a, 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 a restricted palette where that's concerned. I, I like, I like the fact that, you know, I mean, the great thing about sort of being freelance and moving from film to film and, and so is it the unexpected. So I don't really have a master plan. I just hope I have the, make the right decision when it comes along. Obviously working with Edgar, it's become a lot easier decisions because he's sort of making the decisions. So that, that, that's always the, but you know, anything that fundamentally gives you the freedom to come up with a new challenge. And, and I, I, you know, you know, the whole thing that the, probably the hardest, you know, I mean, probably the hardest thing about the art department is generally I find is locations because they're harder to control. I'd like to do, you know, I like sets because, yeah, you on surface it looks like you're doing more work, but you've got control over it. You can plan it, and and with experience you know the way that that's going to turn out, and uh, it's a, it's your domain. Whereas on locations, which, you know, I mean, are fun and it's great to do some really good ones. The Haymarket was a great place and that exterior and, and actually the control of the middle of Soho was great fun. But it's always a little bit more in the balance and you're at the risk of the element. So if I, I suppose if I was going to try, I'd like to do a one that was all built. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a, it's a, you know, beautiful work on this film. We can't wait to see you what you do next, what you tackle next. And maybe it will be all one that's all built and it'll be all your never control. <laughs> uh, so thank you so much. If you're out there watching, subscribe to Gold Derby. And Marcus, thank you again. It was a pleasure to talk to you. That was a great pleasure. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.